Hello, I'm Esteban Vegas, and I'm here to refute the proposition that legalizing medical marijuana will be a benefit for the United States. Sometimes when you surf the internet, you may come across a few videos that serve as an example of the success of legalized marijuana, medical marijuana, as a treatment. Inevitably, you may be compelled to believe that marijuana is a miracle drug of sorts capable of treating a legion of diseases. However, this may not necessarily be the case. I will argue that the way medical marijuana has been implemented will not have always helped people with the prospects of seeking better, better medical treatment because the prescription of marijuana is arbitrary, counterproductive, and most importantly, sometimes outright harmful. The proponent of this position mentioned three specific FDA-approved drugs that have been used to treat patients. While these highly regulated drugs are the safest bet for responsible use of medical marijuana, they do not account for all usage of medical marijuana. This brings me to my first point of contention. Where doctor, when doctors prescribe the use of medical marijuana, it is usually arbitrary and hardly ever conducive to the improvement of the patient's condition. There is no analysis, there is no lab testing, just a prescription. A study published in the U.S. National Library of Medicine and National Institutes of Health conducted a rigorous review of studies of diseases for which medical marijuana is allowed and prescribed. These diseases and conditions included the list of frequent targets for medical marijuana are <clears throat> um, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, wasting syndrome, cancer, as mentioned by the proponents of medical marijuana, Crohn's disease, human immunodeficiency, glaucoma, hepatitis C virus, and even brain-specific conditions such as Alzheimer's disease and epilepsy. The findings in this study indicated that for these specific conditions, there's actually insufficient evidence to support the recommendation of medical marijuana. Furthermore, the study notes that there is still a substantial amount of rigorous research that needs to come to fruition before responsible diagnostics can take place. My second point of contention follows from the previous one. Marijuana is actually bad for you, especially if you're being treated for a brain-related disease. The proponent of medical marijuana even said in his own speech that marijuana can be harmful if used erratically. In most states that have, pra that have practiced medical marijuana, patients have merely stated a vague condition of illness, which has been enough to warrant a permit of access to medical marijuana that grants the patient access to the unsupervised self-treatment. Uh, according to Cannabis and Pain, a clinical review by researchers Kevin P. Hill Matt, and Matt D. Palastro, uh, they concluded that although the subjective pain relief, because just as a quick side note, the, the original proponent of this position also noted that marijuana in many cases is used to treat side effects specifically, so not necessarily the, the root of the disease, but the side effects of the disease. So they said here that although the subjective pain relief felt from cannabis may not be a, an object, may not, uh, sorry, excuse me, although the subjective pain relief from cannabis may not match the objective measurements of analgesia, as more patients turn to cannabis for pain relief, there is a need for additional scientific evidence to evaluate this increase. So in conclusion, more research needs to be done before widespread implementation. Although the proponent of medical marijuana clearly stated that responsible administration of medical marijuana was optimal, I will offer an argument of practicality. Because marijuana is a drug that primarily is used to treat side effects and not deep medical problems, it is doomed from the beginning. Medical practitioners do will not be able to properly vet and supervise the millions of people that attempt uh, to obtain medical marijuana licenses to treat simple side effects. Remember, marijuana is actually harmful. Unknowingly, these people may be exacerbating their conditions in the long run for daily sacrificial doses of temperamental relief. In fact, the preponderance of capricious marijuana use may be largely responsible for the incessant marijuana use disorders in 2001 and 2 and in 2012 and 13. According to a study by two PhDs, Deborah Hazen and Tulshi D. Sasha, between the years 2001 and 2, the use of marijuana doubled, and in 2012 and 13, there was also a substantial increase in marijuana usage. Nearly 3 in 10 marijuana users developed a related disorder in 2012 and 13. We also know that since 1995, the potency and THC concentration, which is the psychoactive ingredient in marijuana, has actually increased and is rising rapidly. So I will now finally close with an anecdote about a friend uh, who was using marijuana. She wanted mar medical marijuana to, her name is Jackie, she wanted a, mar uh, a license to have, a permit to have medical marijuana to treat her anxiety. Well, little did she know that it would treat her in anxiety in some sense, but it actually ended up leading her to depression. Now we don't know exact whether it was for sure the medical marijuana that led her to depression, but I did some research and it turns out that medical marijuana uh, actually, or not medical, but marijuana in general can lead to a, a chronic depression. So this is all supposedly supervised and under the supervision, the supervision of, of medical professionals.
So finally, I will say that we should do research first before we conclusively legalize medical marijuana because it still has several medical obstacles to overcome. Thank you. Gesundheit. Right, there's not really a preview of the advocates' arguments, but there is an argument that you set up about it being, argue, ar, excuse me, arbitrary, counterproductive, and harmful, uh, which I think was easy to uh, follow in your presentation. This sounds a lot like a rebuttal speech, although I do think that there are places here where you are directly addressing some of the evidence and claims being presented by the advocate. On the first point, uh, you're very specific about how uh, some of this research is unreliable, that there is, uh, especially when it comes to brain-related issues, uh, that there's, there's a lack of uh, data to support these kinds of things. Um, the, the absence of rigorous research is a main criticism in several places in the speech, but especially here at the beginning. Uh, there's not really much discussion of what the advocates' research on these particular points are. It's a more generic sort of argument that could be including a lot of different things that the advocate's talking about. Probably wouldn't hurt to have some uh, particulars about the things that the advocate mentioned. Uh, the second point on uh, brain disease, I think uh, you did a, a nice job of suggesting uh, how it could be potentially counterproductive. Uh, how also, that it, it seems to be like it's um, self-reporting. Uh, you don't quite say that it is a placebo effect, but in essence it is. Uh, people are self-medicating and uh, the pain relief is subjective in some way and that in the long run that could lead to potential consequences. That's a little speculative, but I do think that you at least have given us a reason to uh, be concerned about that issue. What, what would be helpful is if we could have the information that the, or the evidence that the advocate used and you could contrast that with the position that you're taking here and then ask which one seems more reasonable. Um, on the practicality issue, I do think that it, you've got a very realistic idea here that millions of people are seeking access for this and there's no way to vet them, that they're largely uh, self-medicating in these situations, that the demand has gone up uh, substantially in particular years, you cite that information, and that the uh, THC contact has gone up quite a bit. Um, some of that information, I'm not sure how that, in the long run, that helps you. The THC content, for instance, why does it matter how much it's gone up over the years? Unless there's some argument that you're going to make from that, uh, that probably is less useful to you than maybe talking about how uh, people who are getting marijuana prescriptions have very little evaluation, there's no follow-up. Uh, there's no way to check and see if they're getting appropriate treatment for Ill illnesses that they seem to be treating them for themselves. I think that would be a helpful thing for you to present. And then uh, the uh, personal anecdote I think is okay. Um, I assume that uh, Jackie had uh, other kinds of issues with depression. Uh, we don't really get much of a description there. Maybe that's a little too personal, but um, you know, it is a kind of generic kind of piece of information here. Uh, it would be helpful to maybe have something that's a little bit more universal in nature. All right, thank you.